Hello and welcome back and thank you for joining me. Well today is a nice simple project I hope, unlike my last video on the EEZ project how to get that set up in the Arduino, that was a bit of a marathon but well worth a watch if you've got the uh, Elicro screen or a screen like it, it will show you how to set it up. Anyway this one you can see that we've got a very simple temperature sensor connected into our screen today and it is just a basic Dallas type sensor this is a waterproof one but you may have them um, in a different package so what we're going to do today is we're going to make this screen we're not using anything technical we're just using one library to do it very simple but you do need to set the library up once you've set the library up you can continue to use it for that screen and you don't have to set it up anymore so what we're going to show you to do is it's going to show you the temperature so if I touch the uh, sensor now you'll see the digits will increase and when it gets to a certain temperature the digits will change colour at the moment it's indicating a cold colour because it's in blue and when it gets to a set temperature there 26 it changes colour release it and it will gradually drop down uh, to room temperature so let's have a quick look at the code I've put some basic information at the top when you are using these sensors you do need to add a resistor in the power line I've got them built in so in in my setup under the heat shrink there's a very very tiny resistor between the power and heater so I, that's why I'm not showing any external resistor but you do need it otherwise I think you blow the sensor up now on here I've been experimenting with platform IO I'm not using that today as you can see I'm using the Arduino IDE so if you're using platform IO you need to include this I can take that out because I'm not using it today. You do need to load these these libraries in, and well, you need these three libraries <coughs> to make it work. So the importance with the TFT eSpy is once you've got it loaded, you need to go and find it in your uh, hard drive. So this will show you where your Arduino is held. We click and browse. You can see all of these are within my um, library now we need to go into this one we can't do it here um, because we can't edit it so look at this um, look at this location go and find it in Explorer so, if, so mine is particularly messy so if we if we go and find the libraries which is here click on it scroll down to find TFT ease by and then you need to double click on the user setup.h and that will open up whatever text editor you have I've got VS code so that's what it's open now you need to edit this for your screen that you're using so you need to check your documentation you've got on your screen that's interesting so I need to define this driver because that's what mine uses yours may be different put in the size of your screen here scroll down and we now need to set up the pin allocation so you need to look in your documentation and fill out something like this so whatever I've got here your numbers will differ here but you need to add your pin assignments into here otherwise it's not going to work and the last one is normal we just leave these as normal and we'll be able to use it so make sure you save it and then you can close it and that's the that's the library set up for that screen if you change your screen you would have to go in there and change possibly your pin assignments and the actual uh, driver that's driving your screen so on this screen it has connectors on the back and they call them crow tails so I've got two GPIO pins available here which I'm using and I think it was 25 and 32 so I'm using 32 I've got an I2C bus you are speaker battery and it's also got a TFT card down here and I'll be using that in future videos because I want to actually record the information 
that the temperature sensors are giving me. So once you've got your libraries installed, you need to tell the one wire bus what pin we're looking at. In my case, it's 32. And here I've set a low temperature, and this is how the numbers will change color. So here we're just setting up the one wire bus and the Dallas temperature sensor. This is standard, this is setting up the TFT eSpy. Then we are starting the TFT rotation here. You've got a choice of, well, one to seven really, but one to three is what I am using. So if I change the code to three, it will flip the screen around 180 degrees. Um, serial, start the sensor. Now up here, I'll put a note why I'm filling the screen up here. It's because it stops the screen from flashing. And you can just see I'll put a, a note there. So if you have it down in the loop, if you have it, uh, where did I put it? If you put it down here, you can see if you put it here, the TFT will look like the white text is flashing. So you can try that and you'll see why I've put it up there. So this is some serial um, statements just to make sure that the sensor is working. So you can see it on your serial monitor, even if it's not coming on your screen, at least you know you're reading the values and you've just got a screen issue, but I'll show you that in a second. Then just using this um, line here to position the cursor where we want to draw the text. So this is the color of the text and the color of the background and the color of the background here will match the color of the fill here. And it just helps with um, artifacting, I believe. It just makes the text clearer. Text size, you've got a choice of uh, one to six, I think it was, but you can play with that and it'll just see the text change. So this is how I'm putting in the temperature at the top. Then for the large digits, you can just see I position the cursor. Here's the little bit of code that changes the colors. So it's saying if the temperature sensor data is greater or equal than, in my case, 26, then we're going to do this line. So we're going to print it white on a red background, else we print it blue on a red background. And that's just how you do it. That's the font size. Then we're getting the temperature by index. Now we've only got one temperature sensor because you can chain these together and that will be coming on another video because I want to get three temperature sensors linked together and recording the data on an SD card. So if you're interested, please subscribe so you don't miss that one. And if you want to do it in Fahrenheit, then you delete, uh, come out this line and use this line and it will give you in Fahrenheit. This is positioning the, the degrees, bit of self motion at the bottom, why not? And that is it. And I'm choosing to refresh the screen every half a second. So these will refresh quicker than the standard DHT uh, 11s and 22s. So something like, like these sensors. So you can still use these exactly the same, but they don't refresh as quick. So that is the code. So let me just show it running again. If I touch it, the numbers will jump up every half a second, depending how hot you are. And then when it gets to the set temperature in 26, it will change color. So that's it. A nice, simple project for today. I hope you've learned something. Hope you get it working. If you do, please drop me a comment in the YouTube video below. If you've got any issues, again, drop a comment and I'll try to help you the best I can. But that's Andy, as ever, wishing you a great afternoon, happy coding, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for making it to the end of my videos. If I've earned your respect and your trust, perhaps you would consider subscribing to my channel. It really does make a massive difference. And maybe you would like to watch some of the videos popping up on the screen now. Let me know what you think. Cheers for now.